Today I will create highly textured watercolor panels to die cut my floral dyes from. This results in unique florals with mottled design on petals and ends up looking unique and cool. Stay tuned to watch the process video. Hi there everyone, Iram here with Creative Coloring. And today I will not be coloring any images, but in fact, I am going to have tons of fun creating messy and artsy coloring panels that I will use to die cut my craft of flower dies out of. So I will be using the craft of flower sweet violet layering die set and it has one flower, two leaves and a budding flower. And as you must already know now that Altenew has upgraded their packaging, for their dies and I love this new packaging style, it just keeps my dies safe. It also has a layering guide at the back side that I almost always refer to. Now I will be using the watercolor paper pad, the 9 by 12 one. This is what I always use for my craft of flower dies because I love to watercolor uh, my dies um, instead of uh, die cutting them out of uh, colored cardstock. So now you see me cutting these uh, panels. I'm cutting this to size to fit in the mini blossom die cutting machine. So these are like three inches wide. I'm going to be using the ultraviolet liquid watercolor and uh, you see this uh, flat brush that I have. I'll be using this so that I can color this panel fairly quickly. I will use the fine mister and spritz my panel so that uh, instead of applying water with my paintbrush. This will cover the panel quickly. Now I will use the pigment and apply a fairly concentrated pigment on the top portion, on the left portion, and then dilute it as I move towards the right because I am going to be cutting the flower layers from this panel only. So I will cut the darkest uh, layer from that uh, portion on the left and the lightest one from the portion on the right. So what this will do is it will give me a variation even in the layers. I'm going to prepare two panels of purple because I need two big flowers and I also need a bud. Once my two panels are ready, what I will do now is I will take the ultraviolet pigment and I will add tons of splatters on both these panels. Now both the panels are going to look very different from each other and I'm not even going to uh, worry too much about this. I'm not going to try to le replicate these panels. I don't care if they look the same or not. In fact if they look different that's even more better. More, both my flowers are going to look uh, different. So I will add, uh, sometimes I'll add diluted pigment, sometimes I'll add concentrated pigment. So you will see the darker portion sometimes have uh, more of uh, this uh, clear droplets. The liquid watercolor is quite reactive to water and as soon as uh, there is splatter of water there, it will bloom right away and you can see the texture of then to add more to this, just to add a little bit of pizzazz. And this is something that you will not be able to see right away. But if you hold this card in your hand and if you hold this die cut in your hand, you will be able to spot the sparkle right away. So what I'm doing right now is I'm taking the um, metallic watercolors, the 14 pan set. I am taking the purple from that pan set and I'm adding that to the purple watercolor already on my palette and then applying splatters of that to the panels. Now this is a little bit more concentrated so you will see some dark shimmer on the panels. It may not be visible to you right now in the video but in person when you'll do this you will be able to see. But what I'm going to do now is I will also lighten this. I will then mix the sterling silver and oh, then uh, the purple pigment. Create a lighter metallic color and add that as well. This will give me a range of metallic paint. 
So I have a dark metallic paint and a light metallic paint. And I'm adding these while the panel is still wet. So what this does is, is um, it will mix and flow and it will also absorb a little bit. It, was, it will not be very prominent. But if you want these paints to be prominent, you will need to dry the panel and then add the splatters. I don't need these to be very prominent. I just need the shimmers to be there just to be part of the background, like kind of like the galaxy backgrounds uh, that we usually create. So once I'm happy with the look, I'm just going to use my heat tool to dry the panel. I'm just going to show you up close how beautiful this looks. Can you see the light and the dark splatters both, including the water splatters and also the concentrated paint splatters? It looks like we have treated this panel with salt. Have you ever tried the salt on watercolor backgrounds? It looks beautiful and this is how the panel looks like. The color is a little off on, on, in video over here. It looks a little purple, um, but it's a little bit bluish purple. It's beautiful. If you have seen the ultraviolet ink, um, if you have this, then you know that this is not the kind of uh, shade the ultraviolet pigment it's not actually like this so now for my leaves i'm going to use the just green mango smoothie and yellow ochre and again i'm just going to apply a spritz of uh, water using the fine mister a fine mister is actually really great if you want to cover an area with water relatively quickly and also not very much water just to apply the right amount this is uh, actually perfect it adds a very fine mist the name is actually very perfect uh, for it so now what i'm going to do is i'm following the same thing adding the darker pigment on the uh, left side and toning it down as i move towards the right but for this one i wanted to create more uh, of a mortal effect by using different colors and I wanted to give this a mossy effect. Because I do not have uh, all the liquid watercolor bottles, so uh, I am mixing colors and uh, forming my own shades. So I'm using the mango smoothie and uh, the yellow ochre to form muted green, something more autumnal type. And uh, you can see that I am adding the yellows as... Um, just bouncing my brush and this will create a variegated look. Once I'm happy with the look, I'm just going to add splatters of it just like I did with the purple. And don't worry too much about it. It looks like a hot mess, but it will look very nice in the end because we are not drying the panel. It is still wet. This will mix and it will look beautiful. Again, I'm going to use the metallic watercolors and I'm going to add that green and uh, maybe a little bit of uh, gold. So I, I'm going to mix that green, the, the one that is in the metallic watercolors, and uh, mix it a little bit with the gold to um, create a brighter green. And uh, you can just see that I created that bright green color, right? So you can mix that metallic colors to form your own uh, shades. And I'm adding this to the wet panel so that this blooms and absorbs and also spreads on its own because I do not want prominent splatters. Once I'm happy with the look, I will dry this. After drying, this is how it looks and I absolutely love this. I want a background like this. It is so beautiful, you guys. It looks absolutely stunning in person. This is something that I would love as a background. Would love to have this as a, maybe I could uh, word dies out of it. So now I have all my floral images and leaves taken. I needed two flowers, uh, the bud and uh, leaves. I'm just going to adhere the layers together. You can follow the guide that is on the back of the packaging. It is very, very easy to do this. You can even use the adhesive sheets that Altenew has. Use the adhesive sheet to line it behind the panels before die cutting so that it is easier for you to stick the layers together. For the card front, what I'm going to do is I am going to be applying a very light color wash 
of a mixture of uh, black and uh, a little bit of the gray that is next to black. I will also add a little bit of purple to this because I don't have the exact purple. I will be mixing purples and blues to create my ultraviolet and you will see me do that on the palette here. Once I get the perfect color, I will mix that to the background and I'm just going to be dropping this in. This is going to be a very light concentration. Once this dries, you will not be able to see this completely, especially in photos, but in person, this is quite visible. It's subtle, but it is there. You know, I have a habit of adding these backgrounds. I feel like I've uh, grounded the image and that it's not flowing in air either I do this or add a die cut behind my images it's something that I do and I feel satisfied that my um, dies are not die cuts are not uh, floating in air so once I'm happy with the look I will dry the panel and then add black paint splatters for the black paint splatters I know people often ask me what is that this shape I'm using this is the pan um, that I have taken out of uh, the essential 12 man watercolor set. Um, you can also take it out um, if you want to because I add a lot of black paint splatters so instead of taking out the pan set again and again. I just have this pen right next to me. I will then adhere my floral arrangement which I have on press and seal and then I will just uh, use this uh, beautiful beautiful font from the fresh bloom stamp set. I have this hello there and uh, I will stamp this in obsidian ink and that's it. My card is done. I love how this turned out. I absolutely love the images. I could have done without the splatters in the background because I think the texture on the flowers is enough. If you do try this, please don't forget to tag me or alternate. I'm leaving the tags on the screen. Thank you for watching. Bye.